Welcome to Terminology in Healthcare and Public Health Settings, Digestive System. In this unit, we will discuss the digestive system. Doctors who treat disorders of the digestive system are called gastroenterologists. The objectives for the digestive system are to define, understand, and correctly pronounce various medical terms related to the digestive system. Describe common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the digestive system. The digestive system is also called the gastrointestinal system or GI system. Its main functions deal with the digestion of food, the absorption of nutrients, and the elimination of solid wastes. Solid wastes are primarily made up of undigested materials. On this slide, you will see a diagram of the digestive system. Let's take a look at the anatomy of this system. The gastrointestinal system begins at the mouth, continues through the thoracic cavity, and fills much of the abdominopelvic cavity. The upper gastrointestinal system includes the structures from the mouth through the stomach. The lower gastrointestinal system includes the structures from the small intestine through the anus. The primary organs include the oral cavity, the pharynx, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the colon. The digestive system also includes a variety of accessory organs, which include the pancreas, the liver, the gallbladder, and the salivary glands. These accessory organs contribute to the process of digesting food. Now, let's discuss how each of the organs of the digestive system aids in achieving the functions we have previously discussed. The first step of digestion occurs in the oral cavity. When food enters the mouth, it mixes with saliva. Saliva contains digestive enzymes and helps in lubricating the food as it begins its journey through the digestive system. The second step occurs in the pharynx. The pharynx is a common pathway for both digestion and respiration. The pharynx is therefore part of both the digestive and respiratory systems. Its purpose in the digestive system is to direct food into the esophagus. The esophagus is essentially the conduit for food from the pharynx to the stomach. The esophagus moves the food along through wave-like muscular movements. The stomach is where the food is collected and churned. The food is mixed with hydrochloric acid in the stomach. This in turn forms chyme, which is a watery mixture of food and digestive juices. After an hour or so, the chyme leaves the stomach and enters the small intestine, or small bowel. The small intestine is where digestion is completed and the majority of nutrient absorption occurs. The small intestine is divided into three sections, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. The duodenum is the first section. It is about 10 to 12 inches long. It is shaped like a C and begins at the stomach and ends at the jejunum. The jejunum is the second section and is about eight feet long. The jejunum repeatedly twists and turns in the abdominal cavity. Digestion continues in the jejunum. The chyme is slowly moved along for several hours. The ileum is the third section. It is about 12 feet long. It is in this portion of the small intestine that the absorption of nutrients is completed. The remaining undigested materials, or waste, and water move into the large intestine. After the small intestine comes the large intestine, or large bowel. The large intestine includes the colon, which is approximately five feet long. Any fluid that remains after digestion and absorption enters the colon. 
The fluid is mostly water and is reabsorbed into the body. The solid waste that is left over is called feces and is evacuated from the body by bowel movements. The colon is the longest part of the large intestine. It travels through all four quadrants of the abdomen. The various sections of the colon include the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, and the sigmoid colon. The rectum is the storage area for feces. The rectum leads to the anus, which is the external opening at the end of the digestive system. Feces are evacuated through the anus. Generally, the function of the accessory organs of the digestive system is the production of substances necessary for chemical breakdown of food. As mentioned earlier, the accessory organs include the salivary glands, the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. Now let's take a look at the specific functions of each of these organs. You probably already know that the salivary glands produce saliva. Saliva allows food to be swallowed without choking. Each saliva and food mixture is called a bolus. The bolus also contains amylase, which is a chemical that begins the digestion of carbohydrates. The liver is located in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. The liver processes nutrients, helps in the detoxification of harmful substances, and produces bile. Bile aids in breaking up large fat globules into smaller droplets. This process is called emulsification. The gallbladder is another one of the accessory organs of the digestive system. It is located under the liver. It stores the bile that is produced by the liver. The hepatic duct carries the bile from the liver into the common bile duct. The common bile duct, in turn, conveys bile to the duodenum. The cystic duct is the short duct that joins the gallbladder to the common bile duct. The presence of fatty chyme in the duodenum causes the gallbladder to contract, sending bile into the duodenum to digest the fats. The pancreas is a long, soft organ that lies behind the stomach and anterior to the spine. The location is also referred to as retroperitoneal. The pancreas, or endocrine organ, is also an accessory gastrointestinal organ. The pancreas produces various digestive juices that not only help to neutralize the acidic chyme, but also help to digest carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. Now that we know a little bit about the digestive process, let's focus on the various conditions that might affect this body system. The first condition of the digestive system that we'll discuss is peptic ulcer. A peptic ulcer is also referred to as a gastric ulcer or stomach ulcer. A peptic ulcer is a sore in the lining of your stomach or your duodenum. Remember that the first part of your small intestine is called the duodenum. A burning stomach pain is the most common symptom. This pain may come and go for a few days or weeks. It may also bother you more when your stomach is empty. The pain usually goes away after you eat. Peptic ulcers happen when the acids that help digest food damage the walls of the stomach or duodenum. Peptic ulcers will get worse if they are not treated. Treatment may include medicines to block stomach acids or antibiotics to kill ulcer-causing bacteria. The next digestive system condition that we'll discuss is gallstones. Gallstones are also called cholelithiasis. Gallstones form when substances in the bile harden. 
gallstone attacks usually happen after you eat. Signs of a gallstone attack may include nausea, vomiting, or pain in the abdomen, back, or just under the right arm. Gallstones are most common among older adults, women, overweight people, Native Americans, and Mexican Americans. The most common treatment is removal of the gallbladder. Fortunately, the gallbladder is an organ that you can live without. Bile has other ways to reach your small intestine. The third digestive system disorder we'll discuss is Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is also called regional enteritis or regional ileitis. Crohn's disease causes inflammation of the digestive system. It can affect any area of the GI tract from the mouth to the anus. It most commonly affects the lower part of the small intestine called the ileum. However, it is common for other parts of the GI tract to be initially affected, that is, 25% of the patients experience disease in their colon or large intestine. Crohn's disease seems to run in some families. It is also associated with other secondary autoimmune disorders. Crohn's disease can occur in people of all age groups, but is most often diagnosed in young adults. Common symptoms include pain in the abdomen and diarrhea, bleeding from the rectum, weight loss, joint pain, skin problems, and fever may also occur. Other problems include intestinal blockage and malnutrition. Treatment for Crohn's involves medicines, nutrition supplements, surgery, or a combination of these options. Another closely associated disorder is ulcerative colitis. Patients experience symptoms similar to Crohn's disease, but ulcerative colitis often involves the entire colon. Patients with this disorder may be at risk for colon cancer. Treatment for ulcerative colitis includes drugs and surgical removal of a portion of the colon. Here are some key words for parts of the digestive system, along with their meanings. In the third column, you can see some of the medical terms that we can create by combining word parts. You should return to the online medical dictionary to hear the pronunciation and become familiar with the meaning of the created terms. Here are some additional key word parts for the digestive system along with their meanings. In the third column, you can see some of the medical terms that we can create by combining word parts. You should return to the online medical dictionary to hear the pronunciation and become familiar with the meaning of the created terms. Now that you know a great deal about the digestive system, can you make the correct diagnosis in the following case? Tell me, detective. Jane is 25 and is having abdominal pain, diarrhea, and rectal bleeding for the last several days. In talking with her doctor, she tells him that there is a family history of having digestive problems. Are these symptoms indicative of a peptic ulcer, cholelithiasis or gallstones, or Crohn's disease? Did you guess Crohn's disease? Crohn's disease can run in families. As many as 20% of people with Crohn's disease have a relative with Crohn's disease or another inflammatory bowel disease. It is most common in people between the ages of 20 and 30. Both men and women can have Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease symptoms can be different for each person. The most common symptoms of Crohn's disease are abdominal pain and diarrhea. Some people have bleeding in the rectum, which is the lower end of the GI tract, just before the anus. Rectal bleeding can be serious and may not stop without medical help. Bleeding can lead to anemia, meaning the body has lost too many red blood cells. Anemia makes a person feel tired. People can also have weight loss, skin problems, and fevers. 
This concludes the digestive system. In summary, we covered various medical terms related to the digestive system and described common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the digestive system.